Okay, so I've got a little problem here. I need a compression spring, and the only thing I could find around the house is this extension spring. To get this spring that, that's this size in a compression spring to order it online, it was gonna be like $30. So what I figured I'd do is just try and stretch this out and just see how well it works. And so I've got my little converter hooked up here. This is my extension spring to compression spring converter. So I'm gonna anchor one end of the spring to this heavy machinery and then hook the other up to the tractor and lift it up and stretch this out. And I decided this is probably the best way to do it because if something gives way, it's either gonna shoot straight up or straight down into the ground instead of going flying you know, across the yard, maybe hit, coming back and hitting me or something. So let me hook this up and let's see how well this works. All right, and I just want to point out the first time I compressed this, you can see it, it kind of went back a little to its original form. There's not as much space in between the springs. So I had to cut off a piece a little bit larger than what I wanted.
Okay, a few things I want to point out if you decide to build one of these for yourself. The, the first problem I've got is that the belt wants to rub against the side right here of the base. This is something that I'll probably fix. Just, I just need to offset everything a little bit so that it's not so close to the side. All right, and the second thing I want to show you is this adjustment here that, that locks the platen down is on the same side as the belt. I had originally planned on running the belt on the right side of the machine, but I had to move it to the left side of the machine because I found out that the treadmill motor, the flywheel that mounts to it was left-hand threaded. If you ran it, you, you know, it's a DC motor, so I could have reversed the motor, but then there was a chance that the flywheel could loosen itself if the machine had an abrupt stop. And without the belt and everything on it, playing with it, it was quite easy to get that flywheel to uh, unscrew itself from the shaft of the motor. So I decided to put the belt on the left-hand side and that solved all those problems. And the third thing I want to point out is this right here had a little bit of wobble in it. So I had to put some shims in there to get rid of the wobble. And it didn't really wobble, but the shaft would twist. And when it would do that, the belt would go off to the side over here and sometimes almost fly off of the idler pulley. And also you can see that this is how the belt runs. It's not in the center of this pulley. And that's because one, something's out of square. It's real important to have the machine in square when you when you when you do the pulleys and one of these it's 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 tilted one way or the other but it's close enough that it works but just remember if you build one of these close enough really isn't good enough it's got to be dead on square if you're thinking about making one of these hop on over to the making stuff website i've got all the information posted over there all the mistakes i made it'll save you some time don't make the same mistakes i did I've got the 3D printed files over there. I've got the bill of materials where I purchased everything. It's all over there. Follow the description in the link. Please give me that thumbs up if you like the video and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any more upcoming videos and thanks for watching.